Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well and you've had a good couple of weeks. Um, as you know, I was away last week. We came home on Saturday. We had a nice time down in Yorkshire. It was it was nice. The drive down was, oh, it was it wasn't nice. It was really busy. The roads were very. The motorway was really busy with uh, with bat with lorries, so you weren't getting consistent um speed. Also, it was like really hot. It was like thirty one degrees C. So um you know, it was just it was not dr pleasant driving weather. Uh, we actually didn't do a lot while we were on holiday, which was probably actually very good. Again, it was it was hot. It was like high twenties into the thirties. So we'd go out in the morning and do whatever we wanted to do, and then in the afternoon we'd just come back to the cottage and sort of spend we while sitting out in the back garden and then coming in to cool off and just doing it that way. So it was. It was lovely. I'd taken sort of like my laptop with me. I'd taken cross stitch with me. I didn't even touch those um, for the whole time I was away. I just was like, no, I'm not in the mood. I actually just spent the time reading, which was lovely. Um, I think I got through. I think I got through three books while we were away, if not more. No, I think it was three. So we're just really, really pleased with that. So before I went, I finished. The Firefly Jar by Laurie Beach. This is the first in the Crink Crickly Creek series. And I really enjoyed this one. I gave this a 4 out of 5. So we meet Charlotte. And Charlotte is has moved to... Now, what was the town called? To Crickly Creek to start a tea and um, bookshop called Tea and Tennyson. And Crickly Creek was where her mother was brought up. She, it's where she feels closest or whether she, she thought she would feel closer to her mother and feel happier in Crickly Creek than where she previously lived. But she is getting an education. You know, it's like, as it says here, sweet Charlotte Sin Sinclair has no idea that bless your heart is the same as screw you. So, you know, it's like she's very much getting a Southern education, shall we say. And I have to say, I was like reading this and I was texting um, Beth from Soul Stained Ink going, what does this mean? Is the, I take it this is being nasty and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, okay. You know, it's like, I found it, I mean, lots of people are, you know, you have, you can be two-faced when you're saying something. Um, but I was like, what? Um, and the main, so, so Charlotte is getting, you know, she's trying to make friends and one of her mum's friends, Birda Lee, is sort of trying to help her and Things are not exactly working out, and she is f becoming friends with his, with Jack Buchanan. And Jack's mum, Victoria, is Vicky is really not a happy lady. You know, she's you know she's she kind of looks down on Charlotte as if something Charlotte does something that she's scraping off her shoe. Um, and then there's also Jack's friend Will, who is you know he's interested in Charlotte, and Charlotte's friends with him. And various things happen and it's like how she learns to overcome, shall we say, the prejudices and the damage that is done by Victoria because th this woman is a nasty piece of work. She's a nasty gal. You know, she really is not nice at all. Um, we kind of find the reasons out partly why um, in the book, but I really liked it, liked the characters. Um, once I got over this very much, you know, I'm saying one thing to your face, but really I'm meaning something else. Um, but it was, when it's done so blatantly, I'm like, what? So yeah, no, I, I did enjoy it. And this is my first book by this author. I actually won this as a giveaway. So, you know, I'm I'm pleased to have I've read it and I enjoyed it. So while I was away, I took some physical books with me and I've read Tales from the Shally School by Helen Barber and Catherine Bruce. These are two very prolific fill-in authors for the Shally School series and these were short stories and they were they were so good because they were you know you're told at the beginning in which sort of time period of the Shally School they were set um, and some of them expanded on snippets of stories from certain books. So I really really enjoyed this and again gave this one four out of five it was just so much fun to 
dip into characters that I haven't read for a while or get more story, more more information about characters I've just recently read. So for anyone that's a Shirley School lover, this is definitely a really fun, really good book to get to add to your collection. I then I've read I've listened to all this so this series as an audible as an audiobook, but the audible audio audible book isn't out yet. And I thought I really want to read it. So I went and bought myself The Promise and Poppies by Rachel Bloom. This is possibly oh, it's the final book for the moment of the Poppy Creek series. I adored this one. I gave this one five out of five. I absolutely loved it. So we meet all the characters from previous books, or most of the characters from previous books. But the main person in this book is Donna Hayward, who is Cassie's mum. And Cassie has come back, or so Donna has come back to Poppy Creek because she wants to make amends to her daughter because, you know, she, Donna is an alcoholic. She, she's been sober now for many years and she just wants to be there for she wants to be there for Cassie and help her um and <clears throat> so she comes back and the reunion is not shall we say oh great hi mum you're here it's a bit like reserved which is fine but there is also another reason that she's back and she there's a she has never told Cassie who her father is and Cassie has always asked and things are beginning to bubble away in that area. Um, so we have that story going. We also have Rhett, who, Rhett Douglas, who is, also lives in Poppy Creek. He has had a few, he's made mistakes in his, pa in his past and he's not really looking for a relationship, but there's something about Donna that intrigues him. So this story is kind of their, their budding relationship, as it were. But we also have Donna repairing her relationship with Cassie. We have slight side story of a young girl that Donna is helping to become sober. We have her, part of her story in it as well. We have Rhett repairing his relationship with his son. So we've all of this mingling into this book and it was just so good. It's like, does Cassie find out who her father is? And what will that do to her? What does it do to the community? How does that, if she you know, does find out, how is that going to affect her relationship with her mother? So we have all of that going on. And it, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I flew through this in a day. You know, I just got so into it that I just flew through it in a day. And I'm just really, really pleased that I've read this. I'm going to, I know that Rachel's got another two books out. I've read one of them on as a Kindle book, I want to actually get the physical copy and she's also got another book out as well. Um, starting two new series, so I definitely want to read them. She's a really good author. So I read that. Then on my Kindle paper white, I read The Borrow a Bookshop Holiday by Excuse me. Oh, Kylie Dunbar. I gave this four out of five. I buddy read this with Beth from Soul Stained Ink. So we meet main character who I am afraid her name has just gone straight out of my head. Is it Jude or Jade? I think it's Jude. Sure it's Jude. Anyway, she is just finished, she's just finished her English degree that she's done part time at a local Borders College, which I suspect would be part of Edinburgh University. Um, and she did it part time because she's primary caregiver for her grandmother. Her parents own the local bakery and she's moved in with her grand and is her grand's primary caregiver. But her grandmother has got loads of spunk, loads of, you know, attitude. Her grandmother was is, is such a fun character. And things come to a head that there are gonna be major changes within the family dynamic very soon. And Jude is kind of not that, mm, she's a bit mm, about it. And she'd forgotten that while she was at university herself and her supposed boyfriend, oh man's a douchebag, serious douchebag. Oh, 
you know, he thinks he's one of these he's one of these lecturers that thinks he's entitled to every single freshman that is around. Um and some. So they had when they were dating, supposedly, had applied to go down to Devon to this little village to have a two week holiday running the bookshop. Uh when this comes around, he goes, oh, do you want me to cancel it? And she's like, no, we're not cancelling it. You're not coming. I'm going. And I'm like, go, girl. So she goes down to this this um, bookshop. And the person that really owns the bookshop, when she arrives, goes, oh, is the other person not with you? And she went, no. Did he not tell you he was not coming? And he went, no. And she went, oh, right, okay. Well, she said, well, I'm the only one here, so I'm going to run it myself. And he's like, yeah, that's fine, no problem. But that night when she's um, in bed, the downstairs open, downstairs to the bookshop opens, and this person comes up the stairs, and she's like, who the heck are you? And he's like, I'm the person that's going to be running this bookshop with you. And she went, no, you're not. So this is Elliot. So we have... You know, we have this story as, is she going to let him uh, sort of run the bookshop with him with her? If not, what's going to happen? And it's also Elliot's story of why he's there, what he's running from. Um, I mean, it was really interesting. He's like, you, you, don't you answer the phone? I will answer all phone calls. And she's like, what? Um, and also as part of the bookshop there is a cafe so she her her father before she left gave her 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 grandfather's right recipe book and so she's making recipes from this recipe book for the cafe as well it was an absolutely delightful read I gave it four out of five um I love the quirkiness of the of the town I mean if you're going up the street it's called up along if you're going down the street it's called down along that's the, the that's that's the street name depending where you are either down at the bottom or up at the top hilarious and the characters you meet are really funny you know and they there's the like the lady who runs the ice cream shop has already started taking bets as to whether Jude and Elliot are going to get together and get married and it's just it really is it's full of quirky characters a fun read the bookshop sounds delightful and I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I was really glad to read that one while I was away. I then also, when we came back, or just before we came back, I started The Highland Lodge Getaway by Julie Shackman. I'm not going to say much about this at the moment because it is a book tour book. So I will give you more details about it on the day of the book tour. Um, oh, no, we're back on this one. I then read... At the weekend, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I actually gave this four out of five. I've seen bits and pieces of the movie, never read the book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't really think I need to do a review of the story. I really don't because it's such a famous, famous book and famous film. But I really liked the way the characters were portrayed. I liked the way that, you know, the Tin Man, I don't have a heart. He has a huge heart. He just, you know, it, who said you, you know, you don't need what I was. It was like beautiful. The line, I don't have any courage. You got bags of courage, mate. You know, you're just so good. And like the straw man, I don't have any brains. You got so many brains. It, you know, it was like, it was just so nice. The, I loved those characters and it was just really, really a delightful read. Um, it took me less than a day to read it and I know there are 13 more in the in the series. Will I read them? I don't know. Um, possibly not. I'm just glad to read the first one as I did this one. This, this was the classic children's book group pick for um, September and you know I think sometimes with these series you can if they're drawn out it can lose its identity as it were so I think I'm just going to stick at the Wizard of Oz and say I've read it I loved it and 
I'm just going to leave it at that. I then read Blink If You Love Me by Laurie Beach. This is the second in the Crickly Creek series. So this book focuses on Krista, Krista Hassel. Now, the Hassel family are do not have a book, great name in Crickly Creek. She works at Tea and Tennyson with Charlotte and Sucks, who is the other man, that, who's the man that works there. And she has this boyfriend, Rye, and Rye is from, shall we say, one of the upper echelons of families in the town. And he's really not a nice guy. I'm just going to be out there. He is really not a nice guy. He is possessive. He has anger issues. He is jealous. He really isn't a nice guy. He's In some ways he's also very coercive, which I don't like. Um, but she feels that being her, being his girlfriend is basically pulling her up from what other people call the gutter. Um, and that's not just because her mother has alcohol issues, that's fine, the town know that. And if her mum is in, in problems, then the t somebody will phone her and say, come pick your mum up. Which is all well and good, but she has a young brother called Zach. Now, Zach has, oh my goodness, muscular dystrophy. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And he really, you know, there's her, she, Krista basically looks after him. She, you know... If her mum's not around, then Krista will do everything for him. Which is really lovely. Their relationship is so nice. It is poignant. It is loving. It She will do anything for, for Zach. Um, but when there's like... Charlotte and Will from the first series get married. And Krista's at the, at the wedding with Rye. But Rye decides after Millie's taking off his board of supposed society wedding and all the, the, the cheesiness etc etc and one of Will's friends Johnny is there and he's loud he's Krista finds him a bit offensive at times but she finds him drunk out cold under a bush and she is very nice to him and helps him and sort of tries to you know make sure that he Nothing happens to him. And Rye hears about this and basically goes ballistic and splits up with her. Which I was like, thank goodness for that. But then he comes, he uh, tries to wiggle his way back in. Um, and we find out that Johnny has rented the house next to um, Krista and her mum and Zach. And something happens that if it hadn't been for Johnny, then things would have been a lot different. Um, so we have now a new possible budding romance between Krista and Johnny. But will Rye let things go or will Rye try and stir up problems? Then we also have Victoria Buchan coming back into this and she starts spreading rumours. Absolutely. I told you this woman's an absolute bag. Um, so we have all of this boiling along. Um, again, I gave this four out of five. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, again, still very shocked at, shall we say, southern niceness that can be really nastiness. It's like, I'm not, it's like, Laurie Beach is really writing it really, really well because as I say, I keep texting Beth going, is this right? And she's like, yep. But I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I know there's an, there's the Christmas one is coming out. I really want to get the Christmas one to see what see what happens. But no, I like Laurie Beach's writing. I love her characterization. Um, plot line just in both books had just kept me going all the time. I read this one. I read this one all in one day. Um, I read it on what day? Tuesday. Because one thing I meant to say, Monday I went for my, my flu shot and 
I went out and the lady went to him, is there any reason I can't give you a COVID vaccine? Do you have any under underlying health conditions? So I told her, she went, no, you're clinically at risk. So I got my COVID shot as well. I got a COVID booster and I was like, yeah, beauty. I was like so happy. Tuesday. Oh my gosh, I was so tired, friends. It was like, you know, I was like virtually zombified. So I just spent Tuesday curled up on the sofa and read this book because I was just like, I wonder what happened. Kept me a week. I did have a, I did have a nap. I have to say I had an hour's nap on Tuesday and on Monday because I was like absolutely zonked out. But oh, this, this just kept me turning the pages on Tuesday and it was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. I then picked up book one of the Wild Rose Sisters series. I read book three. I read book three last Christmas because it had just come out. I hadn't realised it was part of a series. I don't mind jumping around the series most of the time. So I read The Father of Our Sons by Christine Rimmer. We meet Peyton Dahl, who is one of three stepsisters. And she lives with, she lives on the farm with her, Wild Rose farm with her Aunt Em. And both of her other sisters, no, Josie still lives, her other sister Josie still lives at the farm, but, and her Aunt Em lives at the farm, but her other sister Alex lives away. And Peyton works at Hartwood Inn um, behind the bar, but she's also helps out the farm and is a budding author. So she she meets she's 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 got this rule at the moment that no men. She wants to concentrate on her writing, get a, a book out, and just see what happens. So this everything's going well until she meets this guy one night at the bar he comes in and basically there is an you know it's instant basically instant attraction and easton is there to do some work for a week with his family firm and somehow they managed to agree to a week long no strings attached no last names no telephone numbers no addresses at the end of it it's just purely Physical end of story. They will give themselves, they will tell each other tidbits of, you know, about their lives, but that's it. But nothing that can identify either of them at the end of the week. And they have a really nice time and the relationship is nice, etc. And then, so he leaves at the end of the week, uh, or the last night, he's like, give me your phone number. She's like, no. We agreed, no strings, nothing, no, I'm not going to do it. Whereas her head and her brain are going, yeah, yeah, tell him, tell him. And she's like, no, I'm sticking to it, I'm not. And he tries to force it, and she's like, no, I'm not doing that. Well, however, you know, a couple of months later, she finds out she's pregnant with twins. And she does try to find him, but obviously she can't do that. She goes to the lady, obviously the first place is the lady who runs the the... The, the inn and this woman is just really not nice either and she's like I'm not giving you the information you know you made your bed you're lying in it and I was like you be so that's okay so she gets help from her auntie and her sister and she you know she's bringing up these two beautiful rambunctious full of life twins called Penn and Bailey on her own and then four years after their birth Easton comes back to town because his family have bought the heart the Hartwood Inn and they are redoing it they are like hoteliers who redo um, inns and hotels and brings them up to scratch and everything and he sees Peyton running the the farm stand and comes over to talk to her and the boys are not with her at that time they're like two stalls down with her best friend Kyle and his father because they run the honey stall and the boys were wanting to be there for a while and she's trying to get rid of Easton before the boys come back um, and 
she says, yeah, I'll have dinner with you. Um, here's my here's my phone number, blah, blah, blah. And as he walks away, the boys run into him. But he doesn't think anything of like that. And um, so they have dinner. And she tries to tell him that he has sons. But it doesn't work out that way. And then the next the next time they they um they they have they agree to meet again, and she'd kept a journal of, you know, her pregnancy and the first four years of life, and at the next meeting she I think she gives it to him and she finds out that he's got sons, and it's the story of how do they work out, him learning you know him coming into the boys lives them them telling the boys that they have a father and then obviously they then end up they end up having to find out that they've got grandmother a grandfather uncle and it's just all of that and it's how it all works out and how or does it work out is she accept you know do his family accept her um etc it was superbly written i thoroughly enjoyed this i gave this four and a half out of five I just really, really enjoyed it. I like, I like Penn, Peyton as a character, I like Easton as a character. I love the boys. The boys are just so much fun. Um, Auntie M and Josie, and I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I've so much so that as soon as I finished it, I picked up book two, which is first come, first come, first comes baby by Christine Rimmer. I'm that way through it so I've got that to finish I'll finish this easily this weekend um so this is Josie's story so this is the next sister um so yeah so this uh, once I finish this one that means that I will have finished that series so that'll be a, a series complete this year which is really nice um what else am I going to read this weekend I'm just going to concentrate on that one just now and then I'll t decide what I want to read from there um I've got a few a few books on my TBR that I can I can read. Uh, my other half yesterday we were out for coffee and he's like, I, I almost didn't come. I'm like, why? You know, I was sitting reading my book and I got so engrossed. I'm like, all right, okay. So I asked him what it was and he told me. I'm like, can I borrow it from you when you finish? And I'm like, do you read these kind of books as well? I'm like, yes. I'm like, yeah, of course I read these kind of books. So I'm hopefully going to get one of one of this book that he was reading um he's coming up for coming up to watch the rugby tomorrow and uh so hopefully i'll remember it then so yes yeah, so i'll read that at some point <laughs> um but this week as i say it's been a quiet week obviously with having had flu and covid shots but again very very grateful that i've had both of them um rugby wise I'm not even going to talk about last weekend. Scotland, I just hope to goodness that you're spending the, the two weeks that you've got off working in your line outs and working your set piece because they were absolute garbage last week. Absolute hee haw garbage. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a bad loser. I, uh, it's like I, I expected us to, I expected us to lose to South Africa. I really did. Um, I honestly thought it was my cricket score to so to hold them to fifteen points. I'm happy with that. Um, if any of you have seen my Instagram post, I did I did post a post a, a comment that if you've not been watching the Rugby World Cup, so that you know we know that the coaches give messages to the water boys and the physios when they come on that they pass them on. That's, you know, I've come to terms with that. That's fine. So the African team, the coaches have got this traffic light system. So they will hold up lights at certain points during the game that will, that sends a message to the team. Now, they're the, they're the only team that are doing this. I am assuming it's within the laws of rugby, but I'm just beginning to think, does that mean that the, you know the players are no longer, in many ways, not making decisions for themselves on the pitch? It is, you know, it is basically coach driven. 
And I'm like, no. Your job as a coach is to coach your team so that basically they can make their own decisions on the pitch and they are not having to be reliant on you. That for me is what a coach is all about. That is what a coach does. You coach them in various ploys and you go, well, maybe you're in this situation, you can do this or you can do that. What do you think? What would you want to do? It is not that you will, when I hold up this red light, you're going to do such and such. That is not what coaching is all about. That is not what, for me, what sport is about. You know, it is 15 guys against 15 guys and they make the decisions as to what they see is happening on the pitch and how they think they can counteract what the other team are doing. So, to me, I did put the question out there, is it cheating? Um, I did get, I have to say, some people on Instagram were very nasty, so I deleted their comments, you know, um, oh, you're a sore loser. I'm not a sore loser. I'm just wanting to start a dialogue, a start a, a discussion as to how far should coaches go what you know where do we draw the line as to you know what is happening um so but that's it so you know scotland have got two weeks off so that's you know i just hope that they they'd spend time working in the bits that don't get wrong i'm sure look you know, gregor townsend will be getting that sorted um we always i kind of in my head i always knew south africa was a was a buy was that that was a a no where we'll not win that but we had there were opportunities last week there were opportunities that went a begging and that is that a team will be frustrated i know as like fans we're frustrated um we always knew that it was going to be the crunch game was going to be the ireland game and that's our last game. We always knew it was going to come down to that game as to whether we get out of the pool, whether we don't get out of the pool. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of... I will be watching the rugby. I watched France last night against Uruguay. Wow, Uruguay, you really impressed me. I think France got one heck of a shot last night. Yes, France won, but it was not the cricket score that I think everybody expected. Um watching New Zealand tonight I honestly didn't expect New Zealand to be to lose to France last week I really didn't uh that shocked me I France played brilliantly last weekend they really did um New Zealand were below par um so I'm going to be really really interested to see what happens tonight I expect them to come out and absolutely can't remember who they're playing but i can't expect them to come out and absolutely hammer them i really do um so yeah so that's kind of my weekend is rugby with the world cup my next x number of weekends are full of rugby so yeah so it's nice uh rugby season once once as soon as the rugby world cup well the week before the final of the rugby world cup the the united rugby championship starts again so i'm definitely now very much into rugby season which is nice. Uh, what else am I doing? I'm, I finished two book, crochet bookmarks for friends for Christmas. I'm now started the third one, so that's nice. I'll get more of that done today. Um, but that's it for my my sort of fortnightly wrap up, friends. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments what you've been doing over the last two weeks. What have you been reading? I would love to know. And what are your plans for reading and doing this weekend? I would, again, really, really like to know. And if you want to come in on the on the the discussion about you know how far coaches should go when you know etc i would love to start a conversation but until my next video friends stay safe and happy reading bye